It's so good to see you this morning, as you can tell. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a different, uh, hang on just a second, I'm going to cut this uh, heater off. It's just a run in here. There we go. It's going to be a little bit different today, and uh, we have a, a great focus on our uh, children today. And as you know, today is a day also that we're going to have right after the service today, we're going to have groundbreaking for our new children's building. And so the children's choir is going to sing this morning, and then uh, Hayden Seymour is going to sing in just a little while. And uh, so we're, we're excited about that. I want to mention to you today um, that, one, you're going to see a couple guys up here that um, I think on stage that have their shorts, and they're not barefooted, though. They are barefooted. Okay. And, and so they're going to be baptized this morning. So they're going to sing, and then they're going to come run around here, and we're going to baptize them. How about that? And um, so I, I would love to go to church barefooted, wouldn't you? That would be pretty cool. Um, but also I uh, want to mention that um, we will not be having children's church today. And there's a reason for that. And of course, twos and threes and nursery are taken care of. But for children's church age, we want them in here today. And so uh, I think that's what the Lord would want. So they're, they're going to be in here with us today uh, as we uh, focus a little bit geared towards, towards children. Okay. And so, at this time, our children are going to sing, and then uh, after they sing, then we'll get ready to baptize. Shadow, you won't light up, mountain, you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain, you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no
and while these uh, children are making their way back down and our two fellows are coming for baptism, let me just share with you that uh, also today, as you leave out, we're, gonna, we're all going to leave out sort of these doors, these doors here to go outside for the groundbreaking. And uh, as you do so, uh, we'll have some offering plates there. We're going to have a special offering again today that goes towards our new children's building. And so uh, you give as the Lord uh, lays on your heart. So you see guys out there with a plate in their hand. Uh, that's what they're about uh, for our children's building. We also will receive that again tonight. Okay? All right. Over here. Okay. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3 says, Now in those days... John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That was his message. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Preaching Jesus. And then it says in verse 13, Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him saying, I have need to be baptized by you. Do you come to me? But Jesus answering said to him, Permitted at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he permitted him. And after being baptized, Jesus went up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and coming upon him. Behold, a voice out of the heavens saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And there's not a doubt in my mind that when these boys come up from this water, Jesus is saying the same thing. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Brothers and sisters, this is Brandon Lafitte. Brandon, have you trusted Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your public profession of faith in Him, I now baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is Asher Norid. Asher, have you trusted Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? In obedience to the command of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your public profession of faith in Him, I now baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So God has truly been blessing. We've had many in the past few weeks that have come to know Christ as Lord and Savior and followed through in believers' baptism. Many of those have been children, others have been adults and teenagers. We're so proud of that, that what God is doing. Not what we're doing, but what God is doing. We give Him praise and Him glory for it. Maybe you're here today and you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus. The Bible says that we have to come to him like a little child. That's what we're going to be thinking about today, coming to him like a little child. Some of you perhaps need to do that today. Well, Brother Larry's going to come and lead us in time of worship as we continue. Brother Larry. Let's worship the Lord. Let's stand together, if you will. We'll begin with great chorus. There is one. Sing with me. There is one who is holy. There is one full of beauty. Only one who is worthy of praise.
There is one who is faithful. There is one full of mercy. And only one who is worthy of praise. Sing it out.
and should I gain the praise, let it go to Calvary with his blood he has saved me with his power. He's going to read scripture, and I just want to remind you again, I like to do this periodically, to remind you of what we're doing in the scripture reading. We, we went through the entire New Testament. We read through the entire New Testament in our scripture reading in the services, and then we began in the Psalms now, where we're reading through the Psalms. And so we just happen to be at Psalm 22 today, which is one of the great Psalms uh, in, in all the Bible, and especially what, what we just sung. Keep that in mind as, as he reads from Psalm 22 when we have a description of what Jesus went through. So, Brother Gilbert, come and read.
deliver me from my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. You, you have answered me. I will declare your name to my brethren. <clears throat> In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him. And fear him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. <clears throat> but when he cried to him, he heard, My praise shall be to you in the great assembly. I will pay my vows before those who fear, who fear <clears throat> him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. And the ends of the world, all the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. For the kingdom of the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust shall bow before him. <clears throat> Even he who cannot keep himself alive a prosperity shall serve him it be it will be recounted of the Lord to the next generation they will come and declare his righteousness to the people who will be born that he has done this let's pray Heavenly Father, we come to you today just thanking you, Lord, for the things that you have done for us, especially that you sent your Son that died that we might have an eternal life. And Lord, we just pray that you just uh, be with us today as, as we enter into this time of worship. Lord, just pray that you feel Brother Wall with your Holy Spirit that he preaches, he might say the things that we need to hear. Lord, we just lift up our nation to you now. Lord, just pray that you just be with our nation that we might truly become one nation under God. And Lord, we just pray that you just continue to go, go with us each day. Forgive us, Lord, where we failed you. And we'll ask these things in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen.
thank you, choir. As they come down, let's sing a great chorus that everybody in the building knows. Jesus loves me, this I know. Sing it. Jesus loves me, this I know. me. 
Oh, I have days to lose the fight. Tried my best, but just don't get it right. When I talk the talk that I don't walk and miss the moments right before my eyes. Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped. Somebody with a hand that I could have held. When I just can't see past myself, Lord, help me be a little more like mercy, a little more like grace. A little more like kindness, goodness, love, and faith. A little more like patience, a little more like peace. A little more like Jesus, a little less like me. Yeah, there's no denying that I've been set changed. I've been saved from who I used to be. And even at my best, I must confess, I still need help to see the way you see. Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped Somebody with a hand that I could have held When I just can't see past myself Lord, help me be A little more like mercy A little more like grace A little more like kindness Goodness, love and faith A little more like patience A little more like peace A little more like Jesus a little less like me. Oh, I want to feed the beggar on the street. Love to be your hands and feet. Freely give what I receive. Lord, help me be. I want to put you first above all else. Love my neighbor as myself. In the moments no one sees. Lord, help me be. A little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love and faith. A little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me, a little more of living everything I preach. A little more like Jesus, a little less like me. Oh, a little less like me. Amen. Y'all ready to go to the de dedication now for the groundbreaking? Let's go. Man, that was good. Thank you so much, Hey, Now, I just want to encourage you, and you've heard me say this before. I've told you this in person before. I'll tell you before the group today, don't stop singing. Wherever you are, don't stop singing. Don't stop singing for Jesus. Sometimes uh, uh, kids will grow up, they're singing, and and to be quite truthful with you, uh, sometimes they grow up singing, they're excited about singing, and we as adults are a little discouraging because we're not as into it as what they are. And uh, so keep on singing for Jesus. Don't stop. Don't stop. Thank you for being here today. I missed you guys last week. Somebody said, where were you? Well, I was gone last week. Some of you have been on vacationing as well, and I came back completely relaxed. I would not be telling you the truth. <laughs> we had a good time. It's hard to relax with little ones running around you all the time. But we had a good time. Can't you see all the sun I got as well? Somebody saw a picture of me and they said, man, that's the way I like to take, get a tan. You're right. I was underneath the umbrella. I had my hat on, had my sunglasses on, had my T-shirt on. 
and I had my shorts on. wasn't going to be much sun getting to that. But boy, we had a great time, and uh, it's good to be back. I, I'm so appreciative of Brother Luke Hawk and Josh to, that I, we had some changes had to be made at the last minute. Uh, Brother Craig was going to, uh, James was going to be preaching. He's had some eye issues and couldn't come. I called Brother Luke at the last minute, said, can you come? And he, he was able to come, and then Brother Ron Cathy was able to come for Sunday night. I heard those guys did a great job. I know Luke did because I saw it on, tele, on, on the uh, Facebook, but uh, I'm so thankful. But I'm glad you're here today. We're making a big fuss about some stuff today. And, and some of you are saying, why the big fuss? What's the big fuss about kids? Why is, why is your church always fussing about the kids? Why are you making a big fuss about teenagers and ministry to teenagers, ministry to children? Well, I want to tell you, if ever there was a time we need to be making a big fuss is now. If ever there was a time that the church needs to be making a big fuss about children's ministry, it's now. Because listen to me, if, if you and I don't, if we don't make a big fuss about it as, as uh, parents, as grandparents, if we don't make a fuss about kids' ministry as, as a church, there are others in the world that are going to make a big fuss about it. There are others that are making a big fuss about, is this thing on? I feel like I'm echoing, but okay. If I'm not, I'll keep going. Um, but, but the big fuss, the big fuss others are going to make about children. I, I'll give you an example. Um, we, we better make a big fuss because the world's making a big fuss. The media's making a big fuss for your kids. They, they want your kids. The media do everything in the world to be able to grab a hold of your children. The educational system today, the liberal educational system of today is desiring to impact our children. And I don't certainly, certainly don't mean that about every teacher, but I'm talking about the system as it is today in our country. Certainly, even our government wants to make a big fuss about your kids. Uh, the politically correct crowd are going to do everything they can do to get a hold of your children and impact your children and your grandchildren. The radical left is surely trying to do that today. They want to grab a hold of the mind. They want to grab a hold of the heart of, of, of a child. And the abortionist, they, they want to grab a hold of uh, uh, the mindset of a child. The LGBTQ community. Certainly that movement is doing everything that they can do to grab a hold of the mind and the heart of your children. And they're making a big fuss about your kids. And so the church must make a big fuss about the kids. Parents and grandparents must make a big fuss about the children. There were some in Jesus' day, including the disciples, that didn't understand the big fuss that Jesus made about children. I want to tell you that Jesus loves kids. He loves kids. I'm so glad that Jesus loves kids because he loves me. And, and I'm one of his kids. I'm one of his children. So as we make the big fuss about this children's ministry and we're making a fuss today about a new children's building that is being built that I believe that will provide for many, many years ahead for the children's ministry of Sweetwater Baptist Church that will impact not only this church, will impact our community and will ultimately this ministry impacts the world. And so this is a place where the Word of God is going to be taught. The Word of God is already taught here. We're, we're making a commitment that we will preach the truth to our children. A commitment is made that these children need to know the truth. We make a fuss about children's ministry because Jesus did in fact himself make a fuss. We make a fuss about children because we need to teach them who Jesus Christ really is. We don't want the world teaching them that. We want to teach them who Jesus is and that Jesus needs to be first in their life. We need to teach them what Jesus Christ has done for them. 
don't we? What a great thing to be able to begin with baptism today with two of our children that were saved recently. They have come to understand what Jesus has done for them, that he died on a cross, that he was raised from the dead, and that he's coming again. And they have that understanding of him, and they follow through in believers' baptism. Not only do we need to teach to them what Jesus has done for them, we need to teach for them what Jesus expects of them. Jesus expects us to follow him as Lord. Jesus expects that we're going to be followers and committed to him. That's a word we don't hear a whole lot about sometimes. We need to be teaching commitment. We need to be examples of commitment. We need to be teaching faithfulness to God. We need to teach faithfulness to his church as well. Those are things that, that are being taught in our children's ministry and that we need to continue to do so. We need to teach them a biblical world view of life. Again, I want to tell you that the world out there and all these different groups do not have a biblical world view. We need to teach them that they make decisions in their life based on what the Bible has to say. And they make a commitment to the Word of God. I'm grateful to be able to preach to you today a Bible that is inerrant. I'm able to preach to you a Bible that is infallible. And we believe that in every facet of our ministry here at Sweetwater. I want you to take your Bibles and turn with me just for a few minutes to Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, not going to be real long today. And you say, yeah, right. You've been on vacation. You come back. You haven't preached in two weeks. And that's Listen, that's been a long time since I've done that. So, who knows what's going to happen. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 13. Very familiar passage. We've read it many, many times. I read it sometimes when, when children are being baptized, but I want us to read it here. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 13. It's in, they brought the little children to, to him, that he might be able to touch them. But of all the gall and the nerve, <laughs> the disciples rebuked them, those who brought them. So they rebuked the parents. When Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased. That word displeased, I think, is an understatement. The word is actually indignant. He was indignant over the fact that they rebuked these parents. And he said, let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up into his arms, he laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. I want to tell you that when Jesus came into the world, he made everybody's life better. When Jesus came into the world, he made the life of, of women better. I want to tell you, everybody in here ought to love Jesus with all their heart, but you women ought to be really grateful to Jesus. Because I want to tell you that Jesus didn't see women in the same way that men saw uh, women at that time. He didn't see them as being possessions. He didn't see them as to be lorded over, but he elevated the role of women in this life. Also, we ought to be able to see by how much he loves children that he made life for children so much better. Children at that, times were, at that time were basically to never be heard from. Basically, children, are, uh, they, they were not to be speaking out loud. They were not to be heard from. But Jesus wanted to hear from them. Jesus came saying that all people are valuable to God, just as important as kings. Why? Because all of us have been made in God's image. Well, the parents brought children to Jesus to bless them. And listen, that was a practice in that day that you brought your children to a rabbi to be blessed. And the closer the rabbi was to God, they thought, the greater the blessing. Is it any wonder that they wanted to bring their children to Jesus. Because there's nobody closer to God because he is God. And, and so they wanted to bring their children to Jesus so that he might be able to bless them. And the disciples rebuked them. What, why, why, why did they rebuke them? One, one of the reasons probably they're desiring to protect him. 
But Jesus was greatly displeased. They're, they're thinking, these disciples are thinking, they've already been hearing about the cross. And Jesus has got a lot of things on his mind, so the last thing he needs to hear is from a bunch of children. And he doesn't need to hear from a bunch of parents when he's already carrying this heavy load. But Jesus was indignant over that. These children being brought to him would be blessed by him. And even though the disciples had rebuked them, because Jesus was on the way to the cross, and, and because likely these disciples themselves, even Peter and James and John and Matthew and all of these, had a low view of children. Likely, they still had some of that mentality that was in the world at that time. In fact, a lot of their thinking as disciples would not be really changed until the resurrection of Jesus, until the filling of the Holy Spirit, till they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they would be able to understand more about the value of these children. But Jesus took this opportunity to teach them some things, didn't he? He t takes this opportunity to teach some things, not only to the disciples, but there are great things here that we can learn that Jesus shares about how it is that you and I get saved. In, in this verse, Jesus uses a double negative. Now, that's not good. Ain't God, no. I know nobody's in there had that kind of grammar. Ain't God, no. But in the Greek, that's good Greek. In the Greek language, when you use a double negative, it is really emphasizing something. So he says, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall not never enter in. What's he saying? He's saying you shall not never enter in. It is an emphasis that he is making here that unless you become like a child, you cannot be saved. You can't be born again. You can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus strongly emphasizes that, and he teaches us several things. And this passage teaches several things. First of all, it teaches us something about Jesus. It teaches us that Jesus was a joyful and he was a winsome person. He was approachable. Jesus was approachable. Do children think today that you are approachable? Children need to see people, need to see adults as being approachable, that they can come to them, that there is a winsomeness about us. I want to tell you that children are not attracted to a grouch. They're not attracted to a grouchy teacher in class. I, when, I, when I think about my own and when, when I was growing up, I wanted to be with the teachers that had a happy disposition. Now, they would discipline me still, but there was a happy disposition. But I want to tell you that Jesus is approachable. The lost people, listen to me, lost people are not attracted to a grouchy Christian. If you griping all the time, if you are a grouch all the time, if you're in a bad mood all the time, they're not going to be attracted to the gospel. If you have a bad attitude when you're at work, when you're not a winsome type person when you're at work or you're at school, you will, they will not be drawn to Christ because, listen to me, he is approachable. He is winsome. And we need to carry that same type of disposition with us. He, they, they desire to be with him. Children should be brought to Jesus. Children should be presented to Jesus. They teach us how to be saved. They're to be brought to Jesus. They teach us how to be saved. Listen to me. One of the things that, why you bring a ch child to Jesus is that children will believe. Why, why bring them when they're little? Because they'll believe. You're not manipulating them. You're just giving them the opportunity. They will believe. They will trust in Christ. And so, as I said, this passage teaches several things. Jesus is joyful and he's winsome, shows love to all people. Children should be brought to Jesus as these parents brought these children. And then children teach us how to be saved. What is it about children that we need in us to be able to, to be saved? First thing, little children are honest. 
for the most part. <laughs> Little children are honest. You go in there and you say, what do you think about what I got on today? I've done that with my children when they were little. Daddy, that's ugly. They tell you the truth. Daddy, those shoes, ugly. I remember my kids telling me those kinds of things. Because basically, they speak honestly. They, they, they tell the truth. And then they have not yet developed pride and pretense or deception, have they? They haven't figured that out yet. And it doesn't take them long, though. They begin to figure out how to be deceptive. They begin to figure out how to dance around uh, the truth. But they've not yet learned to put on a mask. You know what you and I have learned to do? We've learned to put on a mask and be fake. They haven't learned to be fake. That's why when you, they're not fake when you ask them, what do you think of this? And they say, well, that's ugly, that's bad, I don't like that. Whatever. Because they haven't learned to pretend. You and I have learned to be hypocrites. We've learned to teach one thing and live something else. But they haven't learned to put on that mask of pride and deception and pretense. If we want to get to heaven, you and I have to stop covering up our feelings and get honest. Yeah, it doesn't do you any good to cover up stuff. You ever think, well, I can cover up my sin? I can just cover up my sin. You, listen to me, folks. You can't get saved until you get honest and confess your sin. That's when you get saved is when you repent. And you know, I'm amazed that we don't hear sometimes folks preaching when they tell you about how to get saved that you got to repent of your sin. You, you got to have sorrow. You have to have grief. You have to have a willingness to turn away from it. And we learn from them. We learn from children. In, in being honest and stopping covering up our sins. Stop play acting with God. Stop pretending. Be honest. Confess and repent of our sins and place our faith and trust in Christ. So my question for you today in that respect is, have you ever truly repented of your sin? And turned to Jesus. Turned away from sin and turned to Jesus. I believe with my whole heart that's what these boys have done. I've sat down and I've talked to them. I believe that that's what they've done. And to the be very best of their ability, listen to me, they don't have it all figured out. Do you? Do you have everything figured out? Sometimes we say, well, they can't be saved until they get it figured out. <laughs> you can't, you don't, you don't have it figured out, neither do I. I, I got a whole library of, of stuff in there that I, I'm reading and I study. And I'm trying to figure it out, but I don't have it figured out. There are certain things that we come to understand through a child. And that is that we get open and that we get honest. And then also, little children teach us by the fact that they are forgiving. They are forgiving. You ever mess up when you discipline your child? Hello, parents? You ever make a mistake? You ever not be right about something with your kids? And, and you don't want to give it up, though, do you? You don't want to give it up when... When you figure out that you've done something, that, that, that they were right in something and you were wrong in something, maybe even in how you've disciplined them, you figured out that you were wrong and you go to them. Maybe you say, I'm sorry because I was wrong. And what are they quick to do? They're quick to forgive. Children are quick to forgive. Well, I was watching Andy this past week. There was nothing else on TV down at the beach. I'm sitting there and I'm watching Andy. I got to do it every day. So I'm watching Andy and I'm watching Opie. And it was the story about how Opie only gave three cents to a charity. Some of you may remember that one. Andy comes in and said, you mean to tell me you are the sheriff's son? A little pride there. And you only gave three cents to this charity for needy children. Yep. Pop, I gave three cents. Well, Danny didn't investigate further. He was just so mad and his pride was so hurt over it. Finally, it comes out, we understand why he only gave three cents. He only gave three cents to the charity because he was saving his money for a coat for his little friend who needed a coat. Andy found out. He said, well, I did it again, didn't I? 
And Opie says, what do you mean? He said, well, I underestimated just how great a kid you are. And Opie said, oh, that's okay, Paul. And they hugged up. He was forgiving. Children learn to forgive. They just, they just do. They forgive us. They haven't learned what we've learned. You know what we've learned? To hold grudges. The more we live, the more grudges we hang on to. The more bitter we become. They haven't done that. They haven't learned to hang on to those grudges. And so we learn that, that there is forgiven and, uh, forgiveness. They oftentimes have been mistreated or abused and they still are forgiven. Listen to me. If we do not learn the lesson that they give us of forgiveness, we cannot be saved. If you're not willing to forgive others, the Bible says that God is not willing to forgive you. Hello? We need to learn about forgiveness. And so these little children running around here in this ministry or in your home teach us about forgiveness. And by the way, not only is there no salvation without forgiveness, there is no revival in your life or in a church without forgiveness. If you're carrying around bitter things in your heart, if you're carrying around unforgiveness, if you're carrying around grudges in your heart, you can't be right with God. Te children's te children teach us not to carry those grudges. Children also are responsive. They are responsive. We learn that from them. Why? Their hearts are soft. Their hearts are soft. That's why they need to get saved when they're little before their hearts get hard and calloused. That's why we need to focus on ministry to children because their hearts are soft. And we want to teach them while we can. They're not as skeptical as we are. They act spontaneously. Some people don't like spontaneity, but I'm going to tell you something. I think that Jesus does. I think he likes it when people are spontaneous. He welcomes it. L let me tell you, when was a spontaneous moment? What about when Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. When Jesus said, Who do men say that I am? Thou art the Christ. That was spontaneous. Jesus accepted that. Spontaneity. What about when Mary... When, when Mary poured out that ointment on Jesus and everybody's sitting around and they're saying, why is she taking this costly perfume and pouring it all out on Jesus? And Jesus valued that spontaneity by saying that she was giving and doing something for him that nobody else was willing to do. She was pouring out everything she had. She was pouring out her heart before him. There was a spontaneity about them. Children are the same way. We need to respond to God when God calls us. Do you hear me? We need to respond to God when He calls us right then. Ecclesiastes 12.1, the preacher says, Remember your Creator in the days when, when you're 90 years old, remember your Creator. Is that what he says? No. He says, remember your Creator in the days of what? Your youth. When you're little. When your children, oh, I'm going to tell you something. I, I so thank God for people that are 90 years old that get saved. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for people that get saved on up in age. But I want to tell you, I'm grateful that I was raised in a Christian home and I was raised in a church that believed in children's ministry and I was saved when I was 12 years old. I'm grateful for that. Grateful for the fact that I could respond then. The older we get, the more hard-hearted we get. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 11 says that wine, women, and song begin to impact us as we go. You go read it. Hosea 4, 11. They enslave the heart. Sin breaks down our moral resistance. Sin dulls our understanding. And then listen to me. Little children, why, why focus on them? Why make the big fuss? Little children will believe. I said that earlier. Little children will believe. Little children live by faith. They're totally dependent on everybody around them, aren't they? Your little children, they're, they're dependent on you. When, when, when they're little and in the house, they're dependent on you. Some of them are still dependent on you when they're 25 years old. <laughs> Hello? But they're dependent on you. They, they place their faith and their trust in you. They don't worry. I, I, I've noticed this. About my grandkids now, 
They're still eating as much as what they've ever eaten at my house. They're not concerned about how much everything costs. I mean, went down at the beach. And of course, you know, Pop and Gan's room becomes the room for everybody to come to. And eat our groceries. And I'm not just talking about the grandkids. I'm talking about the kids. They're not concerned about inflation. They're not concerned about the price of gas and all of that. It took, them, took us to get there and all those kinds of things. They're not concerned about that. They place their faith and their trust in their parents. They believe. They look to parents for all their things. That's the same kind of faith we have to have in God. The inflation's up. Hey, look, I'm trusting God. Your retirement accounts are down. Some of you are looking at those retirement accounts, you know. Some of you are saying, I'll never be able to retire. We're trusting in God. We're to place our faith in Him. What about your little kids? Don't, a lot of times, especially when they're young, they think, Daddy knows everything. And then they get to the point when they're about 13 or 14, Daddy don't know nothing. <laughs> Daddy knows everything. Listen, to me, when I was growing up, I said, my daddy is bigger than your daddy, and my daddy will whoop your daddy any day. Anybody ever said that? I said it about my mama. <laughs> my mama was a big, a tall lady, and she could handle herself. My mama will whoop your mama, for sure. I, placed, I, I trusted my parents, though, that they were all that. Little children trust everybody. That's why you got to watch them, don't you? But they teach us a lesson about faith and about belief. To enter the kingdom, we must become like one of them. You can't do it on your own. You got to come like a child. That's why John 3, 16 is one of the first verses they ever learned. For God so loved the he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And you tell a child that. You sit down in a classroom with that child and you tell them that they'll believe. Adults, we sit there and we analyze that. And some walk away from it. Do not enter the kingdom of God as PhDs. You enter the kingdom of God like a child. One of those songs that I learned when I was growing up, we used to sing it a lot, I guess, when I was a teenager, was, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. We're going to sing that. Lord, I want to be a Christian. Brother Larry, you know, come on. We're going we're to sing it. We're just going to sing it right now, and then we're going to go right into the invitation. Okay? I want you to stand up. Some of you here today, you have never placed your faith and trust in Jesus. You want to say today, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Some of you here today, and you're saved. You are Christians, but you're not living like it. And you need to say again to God, Lord, I want to be a Christian. I want to live that Christian life in my heart. In my heart. Let's sing this song together. Brother Larry, lead us. Thank you.